magic of technology. Um, if I could tell the seven-year-old myself that I would have a, something in my pocket that was way more powerful than the, the most powerful computer I had at the time, and I'd be presenting, uh, yeah, the, just amazing. Hi, everybody. My name is Jed. Um, last year, I left my job as a in-house security manager to uh, work as a security consultant at a managed service provider. Um, I provide guidance and support. I do a lot of pre-sales and post-sales work. Um, I play with lots of interesting, cool new technologies and uh, occasionally have to help people manage incidents. Um, over the last year, I've learned a lot. I've seen a lot of environments. Um, I've got domain admin and global admin in more places that I care to think about. Uh, thankfully, I have a good password manager and I use random passwords everywhere. Um, and there's a couple things I want to talk about today because I know that there's a fair few defenders in the room. Um, and because I love analogies and I'm a little bit of a narcissist, um, I'm going to talk about those by talking about my Toyota Corolla. That's my Corolla, the best car in the world. Um, I bought my Corolla back in 2012 because my wife and I were expecting our first child. Um, prior to that, I owned a Starlet, and as anyone who has ever owned a Starlet knows, one cannot simply fit a car seat in the back of a Starlet. Um, and so after trudging around Auckland for a day, going from car yard to car yard, finding a whole bunch of different things, I bought a Corolla, which is like a bigger version of a Starlet. Um, it can do 0 to 100 in some number of seconds. I've never seen it on any of the top 10 prettiest cars list anywhere. Uh, it doesn't have CarPlay or SatNav or push button stop start. The, the spare wheel is one of those useless space savers. Um, but I could fit a car seat in without becoming a, a contortionist. It's one of the most reliable cars ever made, which is important for me because we don't have two. It's got a big enough boot to pack a family-sized camping trip, and it even has a class one tow bar so I can take the bikes.
aren't using them correctly anyway. They're certainly not using all the features. Which leads into something that we often talk about, but we need to remind ourselves about more. Security is not just about the technology. People and processes play equally, if not a more important role, because technology by itself never solved anything. Accidents happen. There's only so much you can do to mitigate the impact, but the impact of an 18-wheeler is still going to hurt, regardless of if you're in a Corolla or a Hilux. Instead of focusing purely on the safety technology, are there things that you could be doing to improve your, your driving, to minimize the risk of that impact? Do people in your organization know who you are? Are they scared to bug you because you're busy? If something went wrong, are they too afraid of being told that it was a PEDCAC issue or an ID10T error? Because, ha ha, but building a resilient organization means building trust between people so they can make mistakes, and that's okay because we can fix it together. How do you go about fixing it? What about your processes? How do you know you're taking full advantage of the technology you have? How do you know you're maintaining it properly? Are you doing things that are risky just because that's the way it's always been done? That server 2003 box you have over in the corner didn't fall over yesterday, but that doesn't mean that it's okay that it's on the backlog, waiting for a spare moment to fix it at some point in the foreseeable future. So instead of trying to map your product set to MITRE ATT&CK and worrying about all hypothetical coverage points to the minute detail, spend your time talking to your people, improving your processes, auditing your vulnerabilities. Test your processes, especially backup, restore, and account compromise. What would you do if someone came to you and says, I've got a problem, I don't know what it is, I need you to help me fix it? Show people how and why you use a password manager. I'm assuming, of course, that everyone in the room has a password manager. If you don't, or you don't know why, come and talk to someone, me, for example. I'm resisting the urge to say, make people in process great again, because I think there's been enough of that, but sorry. Remember I said that most of you probably have the right technology for your needs. But keep in mind that needs change, and it's important to track your needs against what you can deliver. COVID was a great example of this. Suddenly, expectations for what security meant and how we needed to defend our systems changed. VPNs are no longer the best way to do things. You can't always rely on people even using managed devices anymore. But that's okay, because there's never been a better time to be a defender. The MITRE APC evaluations prove that while there's no such thing as a perfect security tool, all of them do a good enough job. Sure, there are differences in their approaches, and some are stronger in some areas than others. But they all provide a good enough level of protection for you to build on with your good, piece, with your good processes and your good people. But if after improving your processes and the, as best you can, you still aren't getting what you need, you're in luck. Because I've been lying to you. That is not my Corolla. It was, but it's now Jenny's Corolla. See, last year my wife and I were expecting our third child. And as anyone who's ever owned a Corolla knows, one cannot simply fit a car seat in the back, sorry, three car seats in the back of a Corolla. So I sold it, and this was the trade me picture. Um, and that's my RAV4. It's like a bigger Corolla, which is like a bigger Starlet. And so my final point, recognize when your needs have changed and you need to make a change to accommodate it. But know what problem is that you're trying to solve so that you can explain it to people clearly, evaluate solutions properly, implement it well, and measure how successful you've been. I've seen many a late night email come at us looking for a solution to an ill-described problem. It usually ends in tears, if not at least a budget blowout and a partially undelivered project. Also, don't get distracted into thinking that everything about your environment needs to change just to accommodate one change. Every car I've owned has been dark blue, because I like dark blue cars. I don't need to change to burnt orange just because that's now an available option. If you feel you don't fully understand what or how things need to change, that's okay too. Hopefully you have a managed service provider who can help and that you trust to give impartial and good advice. You, but you have friends. If you look around you, everyone here today is here because you, we are interested and passionate about security. And some of us are even old enough to have ex scars of experience. Talk to others, explain what you're thinking, and ask for their advice. Thank you. If you think I'm wrong or would like to talk further, hit me up on Twitter or email. Um, because I'm under time, I've got one bonus thing for you, because it's always a good idea to drop open source 
tools at a security conference. Um, if you're like me, you probably had to type a horrible, long, complicated password or a URL into a sandbox where you can't just copy and paste it. Um, I had to do this enough that I actually got motivated to write a very simple, small tool. Um, it's up on GitHub. If you go to GitHub, it's actually, I, I even went to the effort of putting it into the Windows Store so that you don't have to go through the rigmarole of asking for a security software exemption from your security manager, you know, because asking yourself for things is always hard. Be safe look after each other, and please, be proud of your Toyota Corolla. Thank you.